distractions. We are an impressively distracted people. Some, some, some statistics I came across to support that claim. Um, according to one source, 42% of high school students across the United States admitted that they text or email while driving. Roughly 20% of injuries occurring in car accident crashes involve distracted drivers. Another, sort, uh, another source noted that uh, people check their smartphones on average every 12 minutes during their waking hours, with 71% saying they never turn their phone off, and 40 saying they check them uh, within five minutes of waking up. And uh, think that just 30 years ago, none of this was even possible because the tools that have made this possible didn't exist back then. Now, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, so I will say that being distracted, giving in to the pull of the many blinking lights and gizmos around us, has its appeal. It has its appeal. I'll be the first to admit that when, I, that when I'm in a large gathering, a wedding reception or whatever it may be, and I don't really know a lot of people, and I'm a little tired and sort of socially drained, I will not infrequently go to my phone to distract myself and frankly, partly to hide from people so I don't have to interact, right? I'm not gonna lie, for many of us, and certainly me included, our phones and the other distracting devices that we have um, work sort of as a pacifier does for a two-month-old baby, right? At least in the short term, and that's the point, that's an important point, the short term, it soothes us, right? It, it brings a sort of relief. It, it alleviates an immediate discomfort we might be feeling. <clears throat> what, what is sad here is that the disposable things that occupy all of our attention, right? The phones, the TVs, the laptops, the smart watches, pick, pick your poison. In the end, often turn us into what I would to call disposable humans, right? So the disposable items create disposable humans, right? What do I mean by this? There's, there's a great quote I heard from a, a, a monk priest once. It, it's a Greek quote, and it, it, it sums up the point here, I think, pretty well. And the quote in Greek is, Pola fota a la kanena fos. Pola fota a la canena force, which means in English, many lights, but no light. Many lights, but no light. Meaning, and this is the image I have in my head, right? When we get into our car and we turn it on, right? All of the lights, all the bells and whistles turn on, right? All of these fancy things. But even with all of these lights, we often don't know where we're really going in life, right? We have a lot of lights, but no light. We're like a person who has all the toys that the person could want, but is stuck in a boat in the middle of the ocean on a cloudy day and has no idea even what direction north is, right? That is the problem we find ourselves in today, I think. Which brings us to the Gospel reading today. And in particular, the opening verse of the Gospel, the first line of the Gospel, which I've always found a little bit hard to understand. Hopefully we can crack it open today. And, and the line reads as follows. The Lord said, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is not sound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. Now, I want to focus on that word sound, sound, right? If your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. And the word for sound, the original word in the Greek, is the word aplus, aplus. And honestly, sound is, I would say, at best, a mediocre translation of the word aplus. We'll get into that in a second. Technically, the word aplus means without folds, without folds, no folds, right? Which is meant to convey the idea of not having sort of multiple focuses, right? Or, or not having multiple agendas, 
Although we generally don't use the King James Version of the Bible, the, the King James Version actually, I think, has a better translation than the one we use. And it, it reads as follows. If therefore thine eye be single, so instead of sound, it uses the word single. Arguably, the word single is pretty much the exact opposite of the concept of being distracted, right? Single is sort of like a laser beam, and distracted is sort of like a shotgun, we might say. And this is what our Lord is trying to tell us, I think, in the Gospel today. He is trying to invite us to a life that is not disposable, right? That isn't adrift on the sea of life, pulling us here and there and somewhere else every two, three minutes, as it were. And instead, he wants to point us to a life of being still in his presence, right? A life where there is focus and where he, God, is our focus. Or, at the very least, he is the person we are trying to make our primary focus, right? His commandments are our marching orders, right? His truth is our truth. And the scriptures, I would, I would argue, validate this point again and again, right? In the book of Psalms, we read, Be still and know that I am God. In the Gospel of Luke, we read, The kingdom of God is within us, right? And so again and again, we see this, this idea of the only way to find God is to sort of reduce our distractions. God didn't create us to have this gnawing sense of being lost at sea, right? Or the sense that our life doesn't matter. That in the end, it's as disposable as our iPhone 14. That is not why God created us. He created us so that we could know Him. And in knowing Him, we could come to truly know ourselves, right? Because we were made in His image. So in knowing Him, we know ourselves. Remember, we weren't, we weren't made in the image and likeness of an iPhone, right? We weren't made in the image and likeness of the McDonald's Golden Arches. We weren't made in the image and likeness of Disneyland. We weren't made in the image and likeness of a can of Coca-Cola. We were made in the image and likeness of God. And if we want to understand ourselves, the best place to start is by looking at our maker in whose image we were made. <clears throat> One last point that I think bears mentioning is that following our, our Lord's advice in today's gospel, the eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is sound or single, your whole body will be full of light. Uh, this advice has two things going for it, I would suggest. The first we've already mentioned, right, that it removes that sense of being lost or adrift at sea. But there's also a second thing we should mention, which is that when we become single, simple, a, a plus, as the Greek says, we actually have something to offer the world around us, right? If, if everyone is running around distracted, right, like a, like a chicken with its head cut off, being one more distracted person running around like a chicken with your head cut off isn't really that helpful, right, to the world. But a person who is a plus, right, who is simple, who is focused, who is single, who is not distracted, someone who knows who he is because he knows his maker in whose image he was made, now that is something that the world could use. That's something of value. Saint Seraphim of Sarov, a, a famous 19th century Russian saint, made, made a point on this himself, which I, maybe you've heard, it's a well-known quote. He said, quote, Acquire the spirit of peace, and a thousand souls around you will be saved. Acquire the spirit of peace, and a thousand souls around you will be saved. Now to me, brothers and sisters in Christ, that sounds like something worse, worth pursuing. But no amount of running around can offer this to us. In fact, running around, being distracted, is the one thing that absolutely prevents us from having what St. Seraphim of Sarah speaks of. It's one or the other, right? We either have to be distracted or we have to have that peace that St. Seraphim talks about. 
Today our Lord invites us to the latter, to the second of those things, the peace, to his peace, to have an a plus I, right? A, a simple, a single, a focus, an undistracted eye, right? On, on him. So that our whole body can be then filled with the light of Christ. Today I would challenge you to take stock of where you are in this continuum we're talking about, right? From distracted to focused. Like where, where are we on that continuum? Or maybe I, I hope, <clears throat> well, today I would ch- uh, perhaps you are one of the people I talked about a minute ago, running around like a chicken with its head cut off, right? Or maybe I hope, I hope, you are a person that is struggling to focus, right? Struggling to get that time to focus on the one thing needful, which is God. Or maybe, more likely, you're somewhere in the middle, right? Today I challenge all of us to be less distracted, right? To, to have the first thing we handle in the morning be our, our prayer book rather than our smartphone, right? To have the first thing we read in the morning be the scriptures, right? Rather than whatever's on the news feed on Facebook that day or whatever the stock market app we have is telling us about how the stock market did last night in Tokyo. God invites us to this peace, brothers and sisters, but it, but it is up to us as, as free beings to choose this peace. Amen. Please rise.